Hello and welcome to edupediaworld.com. In some of our last sessions, we have discussed about production theory, which was a detailed analysis of input-output relations in terms of physical quantities of input and output. However, it is very important to note that business decisions are generally taken on the basis of money values of the input and output. That is, each and every business firm basically tries to minimize its cost in order to maximize its profit, which is the ultimate aim of any producer. So, in the coming sessions and in this session, we are going to start with theory of cost. Before starting with theory of cost, let me tell you something about some basic cost concepts. Now, as we can see here that the cost concepts can be divided into two categories that is accounting cost concepts and analytical cost concepts. And accordingly, we will be studying different types of accounting cost concepts and analytical cost concepts. As the word accounting suggests, these type of cost appears in the books of account and on these types of, on the basis of these types of costs, we take business decisions. Analytical cost concepts generally don't appear in the books of accounts, but it helps in taking certain important decisions of an organization. Let's focus the different types of accounting cost concepts. The first concept is opportunity cost and actual cost. See, every business organization has limited resources and it goes for the best use of its resources. So basically opportunity cost is the income which a business organization forgoes from the second best use of the resources. That is the second best use which it has missed. The income arising from that is the opportunity cost. We can take a very simple example. Suppose there a business has a financial capability of dollar one lakh and it can invest on printing machine or photocopier machine. Both these machines have uh, estimated lifetime of 10 years. The printing machine gives us a income of say dollar 20,000 per year and photocopier machine gives us an income of say dollar 15,000 per year. So obviously the business will go for choosing the printing machine because it is giving us the maximum income. But because of choosing the printing machine, it is foregoing the income which it would have earned by choosing the photocopier machine. That is dollar fifteen thousand. So here the dollar fifteen thousand is our opportunity cost. Now from the concept of opportunity cost, there comes a concept of economic profit or economic rent. We can again take this example to explain what is economic profit. Economic profit is basically the difference between the income from the best use of resources and the income from the second best use of the resources. That is in our example, it would be dollar twenty thousand minus dollar fifteen thousand that is positive dollar five thousand. Now the implication of the concept of economic profit or economic rent is that if the firm knows its economic rent on from various alternative uses of their resources, it will basically help in choosing the best investment avenue. So that is why they compare the various uses of the resources in order to go for the best and economic profit the amount, this amount actually helps them to decide for the best alternative use of the resources. Now in comparison to the opportunity cost, we have this actual cost. See actual cost is the 
actual expenditure made to acquire any particular asset that is that cost which is recorded in the financial statements we do not record the opportunity cost but we do record the actual cost the second concept is business cost and full cost what is business cost business cost include all those expenses that are incurred to carry out a business which actually gives the profit to a business whereas full cost here is in, it includes all the costs that is opportunity cost business cost and normal profit which are incurred in a particular business so we can again see here that business cost are recorded in the books of account whereas full cost which includes business cost first second opportunity cost sec and third normal profit which are which may or may not be recorded in the books of accounts the third is explicit cost and implicit cost now what is explicit cost it is those costs which are incurred by the firm in payment of labor material plant building machinery equipment etc that is again it is recorded in the books of accounts whereas there are certain other costs that do not take form of cash outflows nor do they appear in the accounting system such costs are implicit costs for example the opportunity cost is a type of implicit cost now next is out of pocket cost and booked costs now what is this see out of pocket Uh, costs are uh, those items of expenditure that involve cash payments or cash transfers both recurring and non recurring in nature so these are out of pocket costs whereas booked costs are there are certain business costs that do not involve cash payment for example provision of bad debts then depreciation basically these costs do not uh, involve any actual cash transfers of payments but they are recorded in the books of accounts so these costs are booked costs next is our type of analytical costs basically all the analytical cost help us to take our business decision but they do not specifically occur in the books of accounts or they are not recorded in the books of accounts the first one is fixed and variable cost fixed cost are those cost which do not change up till a limit of production level whereas variable cost change with the quantity produced next is total cost average cost and marginal cost now total cost now we come to the second category that is analytical costs now analytical costs do not occur in the books of accounts but they play a very important role in a particular business decision the first one is fixed and variable cost we have already studied about them fixed cost are those that are fixed with the volume for certain quantity of production whereas variable cost are those which vary with the variation in the total output for example the cost of labor the cost of raw material are variable cost because they change with the increase in the output next is total average and marginal cost now throughout the theory of cost these three costs will play a very important role and it's very important to understand them clearly the total cost is the total actual cost incurred on the production of goods and services that is whatever is the cost of production in the cost sheet that is our total cost now how do we calculate the average cost 
average cost will be equal to the total cost divided by the units of output produced. Suppose our total cost is 1 lakh dollar 1 lakh and the unit of output produces 100 units so the average cost would be dollar 1000 per unit. Similarly we come to the concept of marginal cost. Marginal cost is basically defined as the addition to the total cost on account of producing one additional unit of the product. So we see the change in total cost due to one unit added to the total units produced. So we can calculate the marginal cost which is as follows total cost of n units minus total cost of n minus 1 units. n is the total units produced and n minus 1 here shows that what will be the change in the total cost when we produce one additional unit. We can also calculate marginal cost by dividing the change in total cost upon change in the quantity produced. So this is how we calculate total cost, average cost and marginal cost. The next concept is short run and long run. See, under cost concept short run here are those that have a short run implication in the process of production. That is such cost cannot be used again and again. We take the example of raw material. Suppose if we spend on the raw material we won't be able to use the raw material again and again. So that would be a short run cost. What are long run cost? Long run cost are those which have a long run implication first and they are used over a long range of output. That is, once we have spent such type of cost, we can use this type of cost again and again and produce a long range of output. For example, cost which is incurred to acquire a machinery, plant, land, building, etc. These are long run costs. Next is incremental cost and sunk costs. Incremental cost is the same phenomena as like your marginal cost. But the difference is that in marginal cost we see that what is the change in total cost by producing one additional unit. But in practicality organizations do not see the change by producing one additional unit. They take business decisions in bulk. So there comes the role of incremental cost. Suppose I have to introduce a plant and machinery in the organization. So my total cost will change by a large amount. So the difference between the initial cost that is the cost before introducing the plant and machinery and my final cost that is the cost after after introducing plant and machinery will be my incremental cost. Likewise sunk cost are those cost likewise sunk cost are those costs which are made for once and for all and cannot be altered, increased or decreased by varying the rate of output nor can they be recovered. For example, I spent billion of dollars in acquiring a new technology for the production process. So even if the technology becomes obsolete the second day, I won't be able to recover back my money. So that money, that amount is sunk costs. Next is historical and replacement cost. Historical cost basically refers to the cost which is incurred in the past 
on the acquisition of assets for example land building machinery etc so which the cost which is incurred in the past is the historical cost replacement cost basically refers to the outflows the cash outflows which are done in order to replace a asset a asset which has become obsolete and i want to acquire a new asset so whatever cash outflow is done to replace the asset that is replacement cost last but not the least is private and social cost private cost is basically all these costs which ha we have studied up till now that is uh, which are actually incurred or provided by an firm on the purchase of goods and services but social cost on the other hand refers to the total cost which is borne by the society due to the production of a commodity for example the natural resources which a production unit is using free of cost due to which the common people have to suffer the air pollution the water pollution done and which causes the common people to suffer is the social cost so these were the different types of analytical costs so overall we have studied about some basic cost concepts which we are going to use throughout the theory of cost in the next session we'll be starting with short run cost output relations and long run cost output relations till then have a nice time and thank you for watching edupedia world